welcome, welcome to the Heads Together podcast. I am your host, Jill Mokes, and I'm very happy you're here. Thank you for joining me again. Oh, so I'm just coming out of a really great weekend. I had friends staying. It was a friend's birthday. We barbecued, we laughed, we drank a little bit too much, going to be honest. But it was just one of those weekends with friends and family and lots of laughing. Really, really, yeah, just a little aside for anyone who's interested about my little bit of background. So I come from this village in Kent in England called Snodland, which everyone thinks is hilariously funny. But there's something a little bit magical about this place. So my partner, Dave, who I'm with, we met in Snodland, down the village, as we used to say. He was, uh, no, I was 15, he was 14. So we've known each other a really long time. We haven't been together all of that time. We reconnected later. But yeah, there's something about longevity and relationships for this magical little village. Because my two best friends, two of my best friends, are girls that I have known my entire life. Our parents were friends before we were born. Um, We lived in the same little lane in Snodland. We played together as tiny children toddlers. We've still got, you know, home video of the three of us running around the garden with my brother chasing us with a, a hose pipe. So a weekend with with so many people that have been in my life my whole life is it was just really soul satisfying and really good fun. There's something about people you've known your whole life that you just get to be so yourself. There's nothing really we don't know about each other and it, it's it's just really lovely. It, it, it was so fun. So I'm feeling on a bit of a high this morning coming out of that and looking forward to this week ahead, really. Lots going on. As you know, one of the things I'm really passionate about is keeping things simple. So I often find myself adding complexity into my own business, which really goes against the grain of everything I try and teach my clients around building their businesses. So every now and then I carry out my own rewilding exercise on my business and I I take a good stern look at anything that I'm adding in, anything that should be taken out. And that's always quite, it's a little bit like decluttering. It's a really good feeling. It's a really good feeling. It's a little reminder to look at everything I'm doing and double down on what's working and what I'm enjoying and consider taking out anything that I'm not enjoying. Yeah, so that feels good too. Feels like a very spacious week, actually, which I like. What I want to talk to you about today, this is one of those kind of really going back to foundational stuff when it comes to growing a business. And a lot of this is around your mindset. I want to go through some of the things that I see people doing that if they could only stop doing it, they would see their business start to thrive. And so what I want to do today is just look at a few of those things and really give you my take on how you can perhaps modify those behaviors and why you might want to. What might be the advantage of just changing some of the things that you're doing right now? Because we are all doing these things to a greater or lesser degree in our businesses. And that's what I want to go through today because I think this is really helpful for anyone. It doesn't matter what stage you're at in your business. These are fundamental things that affect all of us and that we all have the control to change. So let's dive in. Welcome, welcome to the Heads Together podcast. I'm Jill Mokes, and I am obsessed with cutting through the noise when it comes to growing your business. Each week via intimate coaching conversations and inspirational stories, I share what it really takes to get the results you want in a way that feels right to you. I am all about attracting higher ticket opportunities, building authentic relationships and creating the abundant full fat version of your dream business. I mean, how many of us have beavered away creating a light version of what we really want? The thing is, I honestly believe when you're outstanding at what you do, there is no limit to what you can achieve. So, are you ready to put our heads together and make it happen? Let's go. (music) 
let me just say that none of these things are going to be things you've never heard me say before because these, like I say, they're fundamental things. I will have mentioned these things before, undoubtedly. And if I haven't, I should have done because they're that foundational. The first one I definitely know I've talked about before on this podcast, and that is stop over consuming. And what I mean by that is that there is so much out there. There's so much noise. There's so many voices you can tune into. There are so many conflicting voices that you can tune into. All of the gurus out there who are insisting that their way is the way. I think if you can try and dial down that consumption habit, replace it with a creation habit, start figuring out what's your way? What feels good to you? Because if you can start looking and doubling down on the things that work for you before you start listening to another top tip to implement, you're going to get much, much better results. Okay. Maybe you're one of those like course junkies or newsletter junkies or masterclass junkies, right? None of these things are bad. We all like to expand on what we know by signing up for these things. But I just want you to be more discerning. So wait until something comes up that's absolutely aligned to the thing you're working on in your business at that moment. Don't be tempted to sign up to anything and everything because so many voices coming at you all at once, giving you different advice, gives you this rising panic feeling, right? It's that really horrible feeling of overwhelm that leaves you paralyzed. And what's going to be the running theme with all of these things that I'm going to talk about today is these are traits in our characters that when we let these things happen, they delay us from taking action. And quite simply, taking action is the only thing that will move your business forward. So signing up for things, quite often not actually seeing them through. So again, it's simply consumption for consumption's sake. That is one of those things. It also, it's just so blocking to be over-consuming stuff all of the time. And I know this is the way everything's going. I think I said this a couple of weeks ago on the podcast. My prediction for this year really is that people are going to narrow down the number of voices they listen to. So if you think about that, it's not just your clients that are going to do that. So in other words, your content needs to be better than ever before to hold people's attention. But it's also the way you should be going to only consume the best content, only consume content from people who are really aligned with your own values. You know, if you listen to this podcast and don't feel like my values of authenticity and transparency and simplicity, those are my well, top three values. If those don't resonate with you, then this probably isn't the podcast for you, right? Be really discerning with who you're consuming content from. It will be worth it. It will help you take action sooner because you won't be so confused, so overwhelmed, so (laughs) panicky about all of the different advice you're getting. So start thinning out that consumption habit. The next thing I want to talk about, again, very, very fundamental, you need to stop seeking constant external validation. And this is going to sound strange coming from a coach, because, you know, I think a lot of my clients will look to me for validation whether that's of an idea, whether it's of a piece of writing, a piece of content, a video, whatever it is. But here's the thing, with my consultant hat on, absolutely, yes, I will give my opinion. It won't always be validation. It will be absolutely true and honest feedback. With my coach hat on, I wanted to say, you know, why do you need this validation? Why can you not trust yourself to make smart decisions. And that's the really important thing I want you to think about and double down on. And this isn't saying 
that you can never seek validation. I do it. I do it often when I want a second opinion on something. But what I'm saying is seeking constant external validation is paralyzing. So it's again coming back to not taking action. You've got to start trusting yourself. No one else is as invested in the success of your business as you are. No one. So no one else is going to have that same intuitive gut feel about whether a decision is right or not. And you need to really start working that trust muscle so that you can start taking action quicker. Action gets results. The third thing I want you to think about, and this one's a bit of a, um, this one's always controversial, I think, because I'm not a big fan of the word manifestation because I think it has been bastardized by people who don't really understand the true meaning of manifestation to mean almost magicking something into being, which is absolutely not what it is. So what will often happen is that people will listen to the more manifesting-y gurus, and then they start waiting. They start to wait for their clear sign from the universe, which doesn't come. It's your time to bring to life whatever it is you want to bring to life by the way of your business when you decide it's time. Not anyone else. You've got to stop trying to outsource your decision making, whether that's to the universe or to anyone else. You've got to take control. Like I just said, no one else is as invested in your success as you are. You're in the driving seat. You have control. You decide when it's your time to do something. That's a huge plus, right? I just, I feel awful for these people who are so sucked into the manifesting world that they, They're just waiting. They're constantly waiting, waiting for the thing that they think and dream about and manifest to appear before them. And that's not how manifesting works. Taking action is what leads to results, right? The fourth thing that I just want to think about is competing with other people. Competition is really born out of a scarcity mindset. Whenever we look at the way someone else does business, or we look at what someone else has already in their business that we don't, maybe because we are newer to the industry than they are, or maybe because we haven't had as much money to invest in our business yet as they had, whatever reason that two businesses might be different, we tend to place an awful lot of importance on how we measure up to a similar business in our industry. And that really does come down to, at at the bottom line, it comes down to a scarcity mindset because our mind is saying there's not enough business to go round. So I have to fight tooth and nail with my competitors. I've got to be better than they are. I've got to look better than they are. I've got to do it better than they do it. And of course, the stress and overwhelm, if we think we don't, And the feeling of, well, that will, I, how am I ever going to make my business work? I'm never going to be as good as that. I'm never going to have a a website as polished as that one. I'm never going to have that many Instagram followers. It's all right for them. It's easy for them. They've got X, Y, and Z. The truth is that when you are so authentically yourself, so confident in your own ability, to deliver on your promises to your clients, which is the only thing that matters in terms of customer service, in terms of client retention, in terms of getting referrals for new clients. The only thing that matters is can you deliver on your promise to your clients? Can you over deliver? Can you blow them away? That's what you need to be worrying about, not what everyone else is doing, right? Getting possessive over clients, I must lock them up and and I've got to keep everything I know a secret because God forbid someone else, you know, finds it. No, 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 no. You don't need to worry about all of that kind of thing. Just reframe that mindset completely. Be generous with your knowledge. 
want the best for your clients with no caveats. So that means that if there's someone else out there who could really deliver a result way better than you could, maybe that's their natural person, not you. But remember, there is an abundance. There are clients out there for everyone. This is such a hard one to get your head around, to be that generous to your clients to a point where you want the best for them over and above your own business. This will be a game changer for you because there is something about that level of an abundant mindset that begets success. It's hard to get to it because it is counter to how we brought up to believe that well, that, that entire scarcity mindset that we're brought up it with, you know, don't let someone copy you. Don't let someone benefit from what you're doing if they haven't paid for it. Don't let people take advantage of your time. All of these things. And of course, I'm not saying have no boundaries, but what I am saying is that if you can get past that scarcity mindset and stop trying to compete with other people, double down on what Whatever it is that you do that delivers on your promise to your clients, that is the thing that's going to propel you forward faster than anything else will. Really, really, really want you to think about that one. On the flip side of that one, I just want to touch on how tempting it can be when you look at someone else's business to think, oh God, I want that so badly. If I can just replicate every tiny piece of that business, then I'll have that. Doesn't work that way. Just doesn't work that way, which is absolutely brilliant. We don't want it to work that way because we all want to have uncapped success based on our uniqueness, based on the fact that we have no competition when we are absolutely uniquely, authentically ourselves, right? What works for someone else won't necessarily work for another living being because there is no other living being the same combination of personality, of skill, of experience as person A. And like I say, that's the best news ever. We don't want there to be. This is really, honestly, life-changing if you can get your head around the advantage you have in just being you it takes off so much pressure from you. And in fact, it can turn into a bit of an addiction. So for me, I find it quite addictive to keep looking internally at what makes me different and doubling down on that. You know, I have quite a snarky sense of humor sometimes, you know that. So, okay, well, how do I double down on that? Because that's so genuinely, authentically me. That makes me different, right? You know, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. All I have to do is be myself and I'm straight away different and authentic and unique and competition less. So get addicted to finding out the things about you that make you you, the things that make you stand out from other people and double down on those. The next thing I want to talk about is worrying you're not expert enough. This is a biggie. This is another one that stops you taking action and keeps you a little bit paralyzed. It's it's imposter syndrome, I guess. This happens to coaches a lot and probably business coaches more than any other kind of coach. But the truth is that even as a business coach, which I am, I don't have to know all the answers to every business question that anyone could ever come up with. No one knows all of the answers, right? You do need to be committed to constantly sharpening your saw, to use Stephen Covey's beautiful analogy. You do need to be constantly working on being the best you can be in whatever niche you've chosen to work in, right? But here's the thing. My skill isn't in being an encyclopedia of business strategy and systems. That's not what I describe myself as or purport to be in any way, shape or form. My skill is really in 
helping my clients dream big, get really crystal clear on what they want to achieve, work out what their goals are, decide what's the right business model for them. And this is internal work. This is questions that I ask them to really understand who it is they want to work with. What's the unique, irresistible offer that only they can make because of who they are? What are the right marketing strategies for them? I don't have to put in front of them every marketing strategy ever known to man. I don't know every marketing strategy ever known to man. I don't claim to. I don't need to. What I can do is use my own experience and my own knowledge to share with them some ideas and then to really get a feel for what they like to do. Because let's face it, any strategy you don't enjoy or don't like, you're not going to stick to. Entrepreneurship, it's a continual self-directed journey. You can have the best coaches and consultants in the world, but entrepreneurship is really about what works for you. So if you're a coach or any kind of expert, I want you to remember that you don't have to know everything about your industry. You can't. And that's okay. That doesn't matter because all that matters is that you can deliver on the promises you do make. So if I were a business coach saying, I know absolutely everything there is to know about marketing. So hire me and I will give you a marketing strategy that 10 times your revenue in the next seven days. That's a lie. That is a lie, Jill. You're not going to do that, are you? And you don't know everything about marketing. So (laughs) you just got to own what you do. Do. What is your expertise? What are the dis- results you really deliver to your clients? Double down on those. Stop worrying you're not expert enough. Just be expert in delivering on the promise you make. So don't over promise to your clients is the very, <laughs> I've probably used a lot of words to describe this, but that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Do not over promise. Keep your promise to your clients to the very thing that you are expert in and stop worrying about the things you don't know. So I think all of these things comes down to one thing and that is stop waiting. Stop waiting because all of the things I've been talking about today are the things that stop you from taking action. Take action, do the scary things, make the decisions, take the risks. That's what moves you forward. And no amount of agonizing on, am I expert enough? Can I just copy what someone else does? Oh, this is so hard because I'm, I've got so much competition. I've, uh, I'm working in a field where there's so much competition. Oh, this is so hard. Well, I feel like if this was right for me, I'd be getting a clear sign from the universe. Maybe if I just ask another 10 people whether they think this is a good idea or not, you know, these are all delaying tactics. If you want success or if you want to take your business to a new level, if you've already got a level of success in your business and you really want to turn up the dial, the answer is taking action. I don't care if that's a micro action. In fact, I am the queen of micro actions. I love micro actions. I love nothing more than like the craziest, wildest vision broken down into high level goals. And those high level goals being broken down to oh, mid-level goals and those middle-level goals being broken down into weekly goals and the weekly goals being broken down into micro tasks that have to be done each day. This is entrepreneurship. It's taking micro step after micro step towards a big vision and refusing to believe that you can't make that happen. And I tell you what, if you master the art of taking micro steps, celebrating victories, however small they are, and not stopping, you can take any thing as far as you want to take it. You only stop when you stop, right? So that's a deep and meaningful one to finish on, isn't it? You only stop when you stop. I like that. Making a note to use that again. 
Listen, I hope this has been helpful this week. Sometimes I think it's really good to just go back to some of those fundamental mindset things that often keep us locked in place. Check out the show notes because I'll list out the things in case you do kind of grab them, put them in a, a list, print it out, stick it on your wall. Don't do these things today. <laughs> Well, I hope you have a fantastic week. I just want to thank you for sticking around till the end. A quick reminder that registration is now open for our unapologetic retreat in the beautiful Algarve of Portugal in October this year. This is truly going to be a retreat like no other. All of these things that I've been talking about today Alicia Rodriguez, who is our mindset coach for the retreat, she's absolutely next level at this kind of thing. So our guests on retreat will have the benefit of incredible time with Alicia to really get this stuff nailed. Lauren Jones, who is all about the brand, the absolute fundamental part of birthing a business or taking an existing business to a new level is around that brand identity. So again, our retreat guests are going to have the incredible opportunity to work with Lauren on their branding. Because once that mindset piece clicks into place, you'll quite often find that the brand or identity you once related to, it doesn't quite fit for the next level of success that you are now ready for. And my part in the retreat is all about birthing the business that you want. However long you've been in business, once you come on retreat with us, you are going to be ready for a next level. And my part will be helping you get that next level business out to the, into the world. So I'm so excited about this. It's, we're going to be spending a week together in, in October. It's going to be an amazing week, lots of downtime to process everything that's going on. We're not going to overwhelm you, but we are going to insist that you walk away utterly transformed. That is our mission. So registration is open now. You can head to unapologeticretreats.com to find out more about the retreat. If you want to talk to me in person, me on the phone, you can absolutely just book a Zoom call in with me. Go to jillmokes.com forward slash book. Book in a little bit, bit of time and we can go through any questions you've got as to whether this retreat would be right for you or not. It wouldn't be right for everyone. So very happy to talk through whether it's a right next step for you and your business. Thank you again for joining me this week and bye for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that getting our heads together this week has filled your mind with what's possible. If you love the show, would you do me a massive favour, please? Would you leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts? It would really help me put more heads together, reach more ears and expand more minds. Until next week, bye for now. Bye for now.